And I have some uh, feedback forms. You don't have to fill these things out, but I appreciate it. Uh, every single presentation, I was talking to someone earlier this morning, every single one that I've given, I've changed. Some of them are radically different than what they were before. Because I'm always trying to get better pictures, better stories, better something. So I like uh, hearing the extremes, what you really loved and what you really hated. Especially what you really hated. So, if you don't mind, there they are. Uh, also, on the back, I have got some uh, business cards. If you don't want to take the time out today on this beautiful day to fill it out, you can shoot me an email. You know, I really hated such and such or whatever. And I promise I won't spam you like, how dare you say that? <laughs> I won't do that because I, I do enjoy feedback. I got my. Got my lemonade. Amy, you rock. You rock. Alright. So you. Bouncing back. I like this quote from Bruce Lee. Don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. And uh, is everybody Air Force? Any uh, infantry types in here? We got a saying in the infantry, embrace the suck. Do they say that in the Air Force? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you? What, what is it like in the Air Force, embrace the suck? Is it like, oh, gosh, we only got tiramisu, we don't have cheesecake? When your internet goes down, you know, air over green beans. Oh, my gosh. What is this basic cable? <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the Air Force? Uh, uh, War cry in the Air Force for Dion. <laughs> <laughs> we we did some uh, resiliency training uh, two years ago. It was all Army, the Army Comprehensive Soldier Fitness, but they had some Air Force personnel because you had the Comprehensive Airman Fitness. It was very similar, and there was a couple of Air Force guys in there. And they're like Air Power and Per Diem, and it was pretty cool. But they they represented it very well. All right, so. The old, good old glasses half empty, half full thing. You got, on the half empty side, you got death and black cats and fire and got a crack there and misery and. And on the glasses half full side, you got rainbows and there's probably a unicorn in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but which one is it? Is it half full or half empty? Yes. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, depends on your perspective. Who, who's ever heard these per perspective or heard say that if you're an optimist, then you're living in La La Land? That you, you've met that person who is a, what's a, for lack of a better word, Debbie Downer. But when you ask them, hey, why are you so down? They say, well, I'm a realist. Those types. Well, you got the half glass empty, you got the Pollyanna's like, hey, it's great. I've lost three toes to frostbite, but you know what? I'm still happy. You know, you just want to take those individuals and just like shove them out of the plane, right? And then you got the Eeyore. No matter what's going on, it's too bad. And so both are pretty annoying, frankly. I mean, both individuals. Well, being optimistic isn't so much about being this, just because you're an optimist doesn't mean you always are cheerful, that you always ignore the bad and look at the good. That is not what an optimist is. That's Pollyanna stuff. That's living with your head in the clouds and it's not realistic. Can we afford to be unrealistic in our jobs, military or not? No. What is optimism then? Here's a great example. I love this picture. Holy cow, this is such a powerful picture. Being an optimist is not changing the fact that this child has cancer. Not taken away from it. The child still has cancer, still has a long, hard road to do to get back to health. But just because you've got this hard road doesn't mean that you can't spice it up some. Look on the bright side. It doesn't mean you're ignoring the bad side. Draw some hair on it. That is awesome. 
I wish I was as much of an optimist as this person. So, all we know is that it's 16 ounce glass and we got 8 ounces of water. The half full and empty is based from our perceptions. What are we putting onto that? What kind of baggage are we bringing along with it? And that will change how we react to the world around us. And if everything around us, all of our 8 ounce waters and 16 ounce glasses, if we always go, oh, it's half empty, that's a nice life. So those of you who are in my earlier group, a couple of you, remember this one. I love this experiment. I, I love talking about it. 1968, Martin Seligman, psychologist, did a great little experiment on learned helplessness. And he had these dogs, and he put them in a pen, and he would start shocking the floor. I know, poor dogs, right? So the dogs were like jumping up and down because it was not pleasant. It wasn't painful, it just wasn't pleasant, you know, kind of like listening to Barry Manilow. It's not painful, it's just <laughs> not pleasant. You know, he, makes me, he makes me cry. He writes a song that makes the whole world sing and cry. So anyway, these dogs start jumping around randomly. And they jump over this little bitty short little fence here by chance, and they get to the other side, and there's no shock. It doesn't take them long to learn, hey, start getting shocked, jump over the wall. So they jump over the wall. Well, he took another group of dogs, he put them in there, but he tied them down. Zzz, started shocking. The dog's like, I can't get away. They're like, Arr! After a while, they learn that ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm tied down, I'm being shocked. So they lay down and they start whimpering. They took off the ropes and they let those dogs loose and they start shocking them. I don't know, look of horror on your face. They're like, oh my God, poor dogs. I know, me too. Uh, poor dogs. So they started shocking the dogs that had learned this and they never jumped. They had learned that there ain't nothing you can do about it. Just lay there. And even when they put those dogs with the other group of dogs and those dogs jump over the fence, these group of dogs just laid there. They've been able to replicate this with humans. When you feel like you have no control, why try? You do have control. You got a lot of control. You got control over more things than you think you do. But as soon as you give up and say, ah, what's the use in trying? Yeah, you've lost all of it. You've never failed until you quit trying. So in, our, in various resiliency trainings, we talk about the egg or the tennis ball. Since we have a military group, we are very stubborn people. And you significant others out there, you can go, see, you are stubborn. <laughs> we are very stubborn people. It pays to be stubborn in our line of work. Omaha Beach, World War II, it was stubbornness that kept them going. Marines, Tarawa, stubbornness. And you have the op tempo just every day doing whatever it is you're doing, that grit, determination, that refusal to stop. Stubbornness. It's awesome. We need it. But sometimes it can get in our way, the ball bearing there. When that ball bearing wears down, what do you do with it? It is no longer useful. You throw it away. You get another one. If stubbornness is all you've got, your only approach to things, you will eventually wear down. It may be this year, maybe 10 years from now, maybe 50 years from now, but you'll have nothing left. You'll be tired. I've kind of life that I want to live. I want to be the bounce ball. Sometimes we need to be bar better. Wisdom. Allow yourself to be the tennis ball sometimes. So flourishing. Great thing about wine. I like drinking wine. Any wine growers in here? Yeah? What, what about Pinot Noir grapes? Do they need a really nice fertile ground with just all kinds of loose dirt and everything like that? Do you get great grapes from that? No. What, what do they like? Well, they like sun, <laughs> but like to work for it. They like less than better ground. The better, the more they got to work for it, the better grapes you'll have. There's a Zen saying that no flower ever bloomed in, a, in an improper spot. Where there's dirt, a flower can take root there, it'll eventually grow. You are automatically, humans are resilient people. We are automatically resilient. We can go through a whole lot of stuff. Sometimes our training gets in the way of that. Marine, I, I, I was, I, I, I'm training for a marathon. I was running out as, you know it's a good run when you puke and then when your eyes are sweating. And everybody's like, yeah, it was a good run. And somebody else said, well, we know you Marines don't know anything about, you know, tears, but that's not eye sweat. Those are tears. I'm like, what is this tears of which you speak? What is that? I don't know what that is. 
But sometimes our culture, our values and such may get in the way. They help us. There's sources of strength. Sometimes they get in the way or so. But your, your life, what kind of life do you want? It's your life. Flourish. So reading, I'm a nerd. I like to read. And if you get one of the business cards back there at the water, I've got a list of Amazon books. You can click on it. There's all the books. Great book. I definitely recommend this book. You don't have to be a psychology geek like me to like this book. It is an everyday plain speak language or so. A lot of good exercises in there. For example, five, uh, uh, one example, which may be in here. I'll read too many. F uh, uh, hug five different people a day. Strangers. That will boost your levels of happiness. There's all sorts of cool stuff to do that boosts your level of happiness. Do you wish for a happy life? I do. That's my wish all the time. Happy life and a date with Selma Hayek. Those two things. I think they're pretty correlated together, but that's just that's just my thing. Oh, let me back up. Well, one of the things that they, they, they looked in their research is what makes people happy. Where do we get our happiness from? And half of it comes from your genetics. It's, it's a set point that you were born with. That level of happiness. So for some people, maybe a two, some people, maybe an eight, whatever it is. But half of that determines that set level is genetic. And then we have, you know, if I only won the lottery, I'd be happy. If I only whatever, eh, not so much. You get a boost or, or drop in happiness, but then you'll come back to your base level. Intentional uh, as it was. So life circumstances are only 10%. Good things and bad things that happen to you. Only 10% of the big picture. 40% of your happiness is in your control. 40%. Things that you do. And there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Holy cow. Anybody recognize Sisyphus? Greek mythology? He was punished by the gods. He had to push a boulder up a hill. And every time he get to the top, he'd roll down. He'd go back there and get it and push it back up. I'm also a philosopher. Canvas here. The struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Now, training for a marathon. What person in their right mind would like to go run 26 miles? That's just the marathon. Training for it is, you, I've already run a couple marathons. Training for the marathon. Who? I must be crazy. Who's got a number for a psychotherapist? Seriously, what is wrong with me? But I can either go to the, with uh, what makes me feel good now, like take a nap, eat some ice cream, or I could try to push myself to something, achieve something, push myself to the breaking point or to what I thought was a limit. And once you, I know uh, you all have experienced that, when you get to that level and you like, you go one more step beyond what your limit is, what a rush that is. What kind of life is that? I don't want a life. Have you ever watched the movie WALL-E? Everything they needed and wanted was handed to them. Their lives weren't fulfilling. You gotta want that sort of challenge. So here's Sister Fizz right here. He's working out. Embrace it. Embrace the suck in the infantry. Or this one. Wife is out here and says, Can't you ever relax? For him that's relaxing. He likes the challenge. So let me ask you something. Suppose I Got an award. Suppose I, I got a football team, all right? We got a football team, and we going to go play for the championship. Best football team out there. So the other football team, they said they just kind of randomly put together another team to play for the championship, a high school team, and we won. Does it mean anything? What if I got a football team, and we go through the playoff system? Not the BCS system, because that's just junk, but a playoff system where the best teams meet at the end. That's right, I said it. BCS. Best teams meet at the end. You win the Super Bowl. Does that mean something? It's more meaningful because you had to actually overcome something to get it. So, what is more meaningful? Somebody just hands you a cookie or a cookie that you made? Super Bowl. I mean, Vince Lombardi says winning is everything, but it, this is a better quote of his that I like. The price of success is hard work, dedication to the job at hand, and determination. Whether we win or lose, we have applied the best of ourselves to the task at hand. I like that quote. So, quick word on various emotions. I'm not going to say anger is bad. Okay. I'm not going to say that. 
All right, got a, it's got a smile there. That's awesome. Some audiences just never laugh at my jokes. <laughs> Anxiety. It's a good thing. Anxiety is good. It is. It really is. Because if, say, you've never lived by yourself at all, and now all of a sudden you find yourself living alone, and you've got a couple hundred dollars in the bank, and you go to the store, and you see a big flat screen TV, and you're like, hmm, I got to pay for that. But you have no anxiety about buying it. And you buy it. Comes rent time, you can't pay the rent. A couple of times of doing that, you will learn. <laughs> Hopefully, like, oh, I want to buy this can of Coca-Cola, but I don't know, man, that's 50 cents. Or actually more now, it's a dollar now. It's a good thing. It helps you, it keeps you from doing dumb things. It's too much and everything, it'll keep you from doing anything. We don't want it then. Then you go to some, you know, an auto mechanic, psychotherapy, and get yourself lying back out. Get your spark plugs wired right. But anxiety is a good thing. You know, it's the, the, the ant. Hey, winter is coming. Let me plan for winter. Awesome. Depression is a good thing. Depression is a good thing? What? Yes, depression is awesome. And I'm going to be, this isn't meant to be sexist. Well, it sounds sexist or so. Uh, women, typically, when they are depressed, may do something like this. Call up a friend. Hey, I'm really sad right now. Okay, we'll all get together, we'll watch Julie Roberts movies, we'll eat Hagen dazs and we'll make a night of it. Okay, and you'll have a big cry. I know the guys are like, yeah, that's silly. All right, right. But that is awesome, because you are connecting with other people, and your emotional Wi-Fi, which is out of sync right now, connects to their emotional Wi-Fi, which is in sync. And then we get back in sync, and that bring me back up. Connection is awesome. If you do one thing, connect with somebody. Well, what do guys typically typically do? What do we do when we're depressed? We show it through anger. We may be depressed internally, but externally we are angered. So I'm really sad. And somebody goes, hey, man, what's up? You're like, ah! What did you just learn? Stay away from Bob. So whereas the other individual gets to call someone and connect with them and get over it, guys, typically, we don't get that benefit. And we ended up never connecting with anybody because everybody's too afraid to come talk to us. And we don't get over it. And then we carry that depression over for a longer span of time. So depression manifested as sadness and all that. You've lost something that's dear to you. is good. You'll get through it, and eventually things will be all right. It's good to connect with people. And then anger. Anger is awesome. I love me some anger. Especially in football season. Yeah. It, it warns you when you've got to defend yourself. And it fuels you to do something about it. But a lot of us, especially in the Marine Corps, but a lot of us think that anger is the only appropriate way to handle things. That becomes our one tool in our toolbox. We used to have screwdrivers and wrenches and, and pliers and all kinds of us in our toolbox. And we, somewhere along the way, we dumped all those tools out of our toolbox, all of our emotions. And the only thing we kept was a hammer. And here comes a job. I got a screw to put in the wall. Got a hammer. I got a hose, clamp. I got a hose to put back on the radiator. Got a hammer. A hammer is great for some things, not so great for other things. What it is good for, it is good for. It sound like John Madden. What it's good for, it's good for. <laughs> All right, so quick quick thought here on uh, CBT, that sort of thing, cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, in the Army, we call it the ATC model. I don't know what the Air Force calls it. You call it maybe you call it the same thing. But basically, inside your head, you have a radio station that's playing. You've got a lot of thoughts. I don't know, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 thoughts a day. An ongoing monologue. When something happens, boom, there it is. You just had uh, more John Madden coming up. Boom. Uh, when something going on, you had a couple of thoughts. So those thoughts, depending upon a bunch of stuff, may be positive, may be negative. This always happens to me. I never get to the elevator on time. Traffic is always keeping me late. I never get you know, phone numbers from pretty bartenders. Blah, 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 blah. And you say that over and over and over again, you become... Pretty sad. You could come to Eeyore or something like that. It changes your perception of everything. We don't see the world as it is. We see it as we believe. So you have these thoughts. Was it like a, a, if you go to a garage somewhere where there's cars or planes or whatever, and they got the little radio playing in the background, you might not even notice that radio until your favorite song comes on or the song that you really hate comes on. Then I'll say, hey, that's my song. Or like right now. Listen, you hear the air conditioning? 
How many times has something been going on in the background that you didn't know it was going until all of a sudden it shut off or turned on? Then you noticed it. Well, same with our, our, our thoughts. There's a lot of stuff going on until you stop yourself and you turn your gaze inward and you go, what am I thinking right now? So these thoughts, something happens. Here we're back to the glass. You got a, a, an event that happens and you got these thoughts that pop up. And these thoughts will lead to emotions or behaviors. They can be positive, they can be negative. And a lot of the CBT, this is a, what, a lot of what we deal with. We look at what are, what are your thoughts? What are the things that's going on there? So here's an example. Hey, baby. Hey, what's up? Nothing much. Just wanted to talk to the most beautiful girl in the world, that's all. Sweet. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, nice to know that I'm the only man in your world. I am the only man in your world. Right? Maybe? Switch to the network with the fewest dropped calls. Singular. Maybe is it, is it Earl? Singular. Raising the bar. Guy got your tongue? Earl got your tongue? <laughs> that's just like the glass earlier. What do we know? She's not responding. That's all we know. What did his thoughts throw in there? I'm not the only man in her world. She doesn't like me. And a dozen other ones. They're all negative. So then he went straight to the negative. That can get us in trouble. And individuals I work with in various groups and such, we are all about going to the negative, especially in the military, because I have to be prepared for the worst actions of the people around me, insurgents and all kinds of other things. I got to be prepared for them doing what the worst. I got to be prepared for it. So a lot of times we would jump to conclusions, those thoughts. So yeah, be mindful of that. All right, so boom. You got these emotions going on? We've got Oscar Grouch here. This is my favorite Sesame Street. I don't want to know, you call them Muppets? Well, they're Muppets, but are Sesame Street puppets Muppets? Muppets. They're Muppets? Okay. They're the same, same company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sesame Street. Oscar Grouch. Well, why is it important about your, your, your thoughts and leading to your emotions and your behaviors? Why is that so important? Well, one thing, here's one. A group of people, they had them with, uh, they had them read something. They had a couple different versions. They had them read a report. They had them read a uh, joke. They had them read a story. All sorts of stuff. Two groups of people. One group of people had a pencil in their mouth, just like this. I mean, take a pencil, ah, put it back there, just like it's a horse bit. Other group of people did not. Had them read it. Then they asked them to rate it. How do you think it panned out? The group of people that had the uh, pencil in their head, uh, their mouth, rated it better. The joke was a little bit funnier. The, the report was a little bit well written more well-written, whatever. Why? And there was nothing else going on in the room. Well, funny thing. The mouth, when it's up like this, unless you're the Joker and you're going after Batman, why so serious? <laughs> Love that movie. Unless your mouth's up here, there's no reason why your mouth is up like this, unless you're happy or viewing something with positive regard. So, you're in a room, there's nothing else going on around. The only thing that's in your visual attention is this thing that I'm reading. And inside your head, you got some neurons. You got this little bitty neuron guy that's going, all right, status report. We're being asked to rate this joke here. Let's see here. Font people. Yeah, fonts are good. All right, fine. What about a paper quality? Paper quality. It is a go. All right, paper quality. All right, section four. How do you feel emotionally? And emotionally, he's like, well, and he's monitoring all sorts of stuff. He's monitoring your body. He's monitoring everything. And he's like, well, I'm getting a weak signal from the, the face up here, the smile face. Hey, we're going to give it a thumbs up. And it goes up to your brain. So when I ask you, how is this, your conscious mind basically looks inside your head and goes, huh, I got a minor thumbs up. And you'll give it just that much more. That is that much more positive. May not be a lot, maybe a little bit. The little things add up over time. So, another thing, there's a lot of talk out there about warriors and soldiers and fighters and all this other stuff, and they use, they're using these terms interchangeably. And I'm a philosopher, I read philosophy for fun, and it just drives me crazy when people start throwing words around meaning the same thing. Ixnay on that. No, 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 no. So, I'm going to give you my nickel's worth. I think it's a little bit more, more than two cents, so we'll go. So, fighter. A fighter is somebody not who is willing to fight. That's not a fighter. A fighter is somebody who is unwilling to quit fighting. So I have a friend, she got breast cancer twice, 
has two little kids, and she refused to quit. She kept fighting. She didn't want that fight. She did not want to enter into that fight. She wasn't looking forward to that fight, but she refused to quit. Like Rocky Balboa, and you watch Rocky, it's like, you'll run. You know, I hear no bell. Just keep getting up over and over. You get knocked down, you get back up. That is a fighter. Military types, we tend to be fighters. All right, so what about military types? I'm going to use a blanket word, soldier. Soldier, there's no morality in soldiers. Soldier is about me teaching you the tools that you need to do your job, which is working together in teams to usually do some sort of military action. So how do you operate a catapult? How do you throw a spear? How do you work together in a, a legion or a squad or whatever? Take orders, communicate, shoot, move, and communicate, as we say in the infantry. How do you do that? There's no morality there. Go kill that village. Okay. Whatever. There's no right or wrong. There's can you do the job? Can you work with other people? Okay. And that brings me to my last one, my favorite one, warriors. And we have a very deep warrior culture in our military. And a warrior, you can be a good fighter. It helps if you're a good fighter. And you can be a good soldier or not. You may be lousy at throwing hand grenades and lousy at working together as a team. There are people out there that are warriors that are none of those. But the thing about a warrior is there is something that you love that you value. And it's right here. And there is something that is threatening what you love and you value. Warriors put themselves in between. So where there's people that are chaining themselves to something to, to keep it from being developed or cut down or raised or whatever, or people on peace sits or walks or people who deploy overseas so they can fight something, fight a battle, those are warriors. They place themselves between something that is trying to harm what they love. So, hey, all you military types, thanks for being a lover. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. All right. So that's my thing on that. So here's a great example of a, uh, a fighter. I did a, uh, the Wild Canyon Games last year. In this, uh, the, we had a relay section. and the 10K section, I did the 10K. So that's six miles, 6.1 miles or so. It took me 49 minutes to run it, and Ronnie finished it. She was the last one to finish, and check her out. There's a time right there, five hours, 13 minutes, and 10 one hundredths of a second, or 10 whatever. Holy cow! And for that video, I had to turn the volume down halfway for that. It is so loud. It, it was so emotional when she came across that finish line. That is a fighter. I went up to her, I was like, can I use your video? Can I use this? And she goes, yeah, go ahead and use it. That is a fighter. But let me ask you something else, too. What kind of life do you think that she's got? She could have said, oh, man, I don't have, I, I'm missing a leg. Let me just stay home and just poor woe is me. Or... Hey, you know what? Here's a challenge. I'm all about whatever that challenge is, trying to meet that challenge. Yeah, that's the life for me. Which life is better? So, psychology. Psychology, we are great about telling you what's wrong with you. We are awesome. I can tell you 400 ways why you are crazy. And if you, anybody ever, been, if you ever trained in a, as an EMT or anything like that, paramedic, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having a heart attack right now. And I feel faint. And then uh, you start diagnosing yourself like crazy. When you start going into psychology, at least for me, I swear all my family members are in the DSM. I mean, we got this right here. My mom is paranoid, schizophrenic. My sister is this. I mean, holy cow. It's crazy. But so psychology, we spend a lot of attention on focusing on what is crazy about you. For lack of a better word, that's not a technical word that we use. But in 2000 or so, when Seligman was the president of the APA or so, he said, what makes people awesome? We haven't really studied that so much, so he launched the Positive Psychology Branch. And Character Strengths and Virtues is one of the handbooks. So what these cats did, Peterson and uh, Seligman, is they looked at everything, thousands of sources, the Klingon war code from Star Trek, the Bible, uh, various myths and such. I mean, they looked at everything, and they said, what makes somebody virtuous? And they boiled it down to as universal as they could make it to these 24 things right here. And if you're interested in some of that, I would definitely recommend this book. Authentic Happiness is a great book or so. Any of Seligman's books are awesome. 
It definitely be. So anyway, what they came out was you got some strengths that are characteristic of who you are. You're such and such. Find a job, find something that uses those strengths. So this penguin here, not so good at flying. Not so good at flying. This uh, ostrich, not so good at swimming. But the ostrich was like, hey, you know what? My strength is running. And the penguin was like, you know what? My strength is swimming. Bam. That's, that's where the magic happens. Me, you do not want me doing your Excel spreadsheets. No. No good. But other things, I'm really good at. So, almost done. Here's a couple of tools to help you with whatever as, as life becomes stressful. One, meditate. I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, next day you'll have me wearing Birkenstocks and burning incense. Meditation, that's crazy. Meditation is huge. There is so much, so many benefits to meditation, it's not even funny. It, it, it's amazing. And you can get started by just sitting for five minutes, two minutes, whatever, one minute, working yourself up, do 10 minutes, I do 15 minutes in the morning. And concentrate on one thing. And your mind is gonna, if it's like mine, you will have monkey mind, like, hey, squirrel. <laughs> What was that? Oh yeah, I forgot. I got to pick this up when I go home today. Oh, oh yeah, you keep coming back to that one thing, that focus on that one thing. It was that one thing that we always had, breath. So when you find your mind going somewhere else, oh yeah, my mind is wandering right now. Bring it back to your breath. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing. Oh yeah, I, I need to get some hot chocolate because we're gonna have some rumble mints. Oh, I just wandered again. Breathing in. Breathing out. That's it. You don't have to go um, or anything like that. Just that, and you will start to train your brain to stay task focused. In the military, we love that task focus. Accomplish the mission. It's kind of hard to accomplish the mission when you can't stay focused on your task. So this is awesome. Second thing, eat healthy. That means no more Burger King. I know, right? <laughs> if you do eat fast food, lower it down. <laughs> All right. Give give yourself Sunday. Sunday is your your junk food day. Or something. But I know individuals, that's what they eat every day, three times a day, is jack in the box. It's not good for you. Your body needs water. Your body needs vegetables. Vegetables. All sorts of stuff. So eat healthy. Huge. My grandmother, she, she's deceased now, but when she was in her 70s or so, my grandfather passed away, she had deteriorated a lot. And she, and I remember in the hospital, that somebody came up to her and gave her a Sprite, and she didn't know it was a Sprite. They told her it was a Dr. Pepper. And she was like, thank you. She started drinking it. And she looked up and said, like, who are you? And everybody in Southern Arkansas like, oh, yeah, she has Alzheimer's. Everybody knew it. And they put her in a nursing home. And a couple of weeks later, her mind came back. Your mind is part of your body. Your body needs various things to function. Those various things are found in healthy food. If you eat junk food, your mind will turn to junk. True story. That's as simple as I can make it. Second thing, somewhat related, which I, I, well, I already drank it, lemonade. Willpower, Baumeister, for the you psychology geeks out there, go look up the work of Baumeister, did some studies on willpower. Willpower is not a thing that is always there. You can deplete it. So if you make, if you make a lot of hard decisions every day, all, all day, by the end of the day, your willpower is depleted. Like, you, you want this chocolate chip cookie? Mm, yes. <laughs> That's why you should work out in the morning. Because by the end of the day, you got no more willpower left. You're like, ah, I'll just I'll sit and watch Friends instead. You know what helps willpower? And there's plenty of studies on this. Lemonade with glucose, sugar. Glucose. Your brain needs glucose. So, before you make a hard choice, I need to make the best choice for whatever it is. Do I ship my son off to military school or band camp? Go drink some lemonade with sugar. And then make that decision. Military school is. Something else you can do. Get plenty of oh, sleep. Sleep. Contrary to popular belief, you can catch up on sleep. Your body needs X amount of REM sleep. And, if, and if we, we have, well not me, but studies, they have monitored people. And every time you start to enter your REM sleep, they wake you up. And they do that over a couple of days. But you still get seven hours of sleep. But you can't get any REM sleep. And these people, after a couple of days, are cranky. They are not liking you at all. 
So at the end of the week, say on Friday, they don't mess with them. Let them sleep. They will go, bam, straight into REM and sleep that entire time in REM sleep. It's not so much the hours of sleep, but it is the amount of REM sleep that person needs. And you can't catch up on that. For me, it took me like several months before I finally caught up with sleep after Iraq. Holy cow. But now I sleep like a baby. So sleep. Knock off your lights. Turn off your cell phone. Get all that stuff out. Put I got some big old heavy curtains. All of that. Make it dark. Go to sleep. And social. No, friending people on Facebook is not social. Not the same. But this is the best graphic I could find that was kind of cool. What I mean by social is go do something with somebody. If that means fishing, playing bingo, something. Go do something with somebody else. And not the crazy people, you know. <laughs> All right? Not the people that are always the downsayers and like, Rrr. stay away from those. those people. Like I said this morning, there are toxic people out there. But go do something. All right? It ain't going to be therapy. Just go fishing with people. You'll be surprised at how much that helps. We need it. We're... The worst punishment you can do to somebody is put them in, so, in uh, isolation. You start talking to yourself. I mean, he's also cast away. He was talking to a volleyball. Hey, Wilson! He was nuts. Because he needed somebody to talk to. Alright. To be a great champion, you must believe you are the best. If you're not, pretend you are. Don't give up. Keep trying. Fake it till you make it. I like this little picture of the rhino. Looking at it, but fake it till you make it. So here's a here's a common one. A lot of people that I deal with, they talk about is they don't feel like I don't feel like listening to your problems. I don't feel like making out with you. I don't feel like being present with you. I don't feel like any of this stuff. I just feel like being alone with my book, or with my Skyrim video game, or whatever you know. So. For those individuals, and, and on, on, the, on the sex part, a lot of veterans are coming back with no sex drive. Zero. And it's not something that we talk about. It's not like, hey, you know what? No, we don't. It's very hush-hush. Fake it till you make it. So, you don't want to talk about talks? I don't feel like talking about feelings. Sit, square your, your shoulders with someone, look them in the eyes, smile. And like he said this morning, he's absolutely correct. You smile... Yep, this is totally fake. <laughs> but after a while, your brain on the inside is like, I'm getting signals of a smile here. What's, what's going on? Start so hitting the hormones. Before you know it, you'll start feeling better. True story. So fake it till you make it, whether it's whatever it is. If you're not interested in what that person is saying, pretend. Before not long, you will be interested. I know it sounds weird, but our bodies are dumb. My phone number, you can call me. You go to that website, and it's also on the cards in the back there. I got a list of all the different books and stuff. There's a lot of books. If you're a geek nerd like me, you like books. Lots of stuff on there. And uh, Oregon National Guard Soldier Service Member Family Support, Smurfs. We call it Smurfs. But that's our website, one-stop shop for Air and Army side here in the state for all sorts of services. Job hunting, whatever. We got a link to it on there. So... O-R-N-G hyphen S-M-F-S dot org. Or if you forget any and all of this, just, just call me, and I'll send you in the right direction. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. We're letting out early, and go Bears. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. It's the Bears. Go Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Where's my... There it is. If anybody is curious, it's 17 miles around this complex. I'm at the uh, breakout, or no, I'm at uh, something two. All right, session three. Bam! Session three. Bam! Session three. Bam! No, we're uh, in a Breakout two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Wow.